had nothing on a 19th century drink called absinthe. In alcohol content and in the trouble it stirred up, the Parisians' counterpart to American white lightning was the Green Fairy. We now return to distilleries on Modern Marvels. They call it the Green Fairy. Absinthe is a highly alcoholic, distilled anise-flavored spirit, reputed to have psychotropic qualities. In the history of liquors, it holds a special place for being one of the most controversial drinks of all time. Yet it wasn't always that way. For a period during the late 19th century, absinthe was one of the most popular liquors in the Western world. Companies like Pernod Fisse produced over 30,000 liters of it a day. American chemist T.A. Bro has spent years researching the drink. Absinthe was originally developed as a medicine. It was developed as a digestive, a digestive aid in the late, late 1700s. And it really uh, wasn't until the 1840s when the French government dispensed rations of absinthe to its soldiers abroad, like in North Africa. It was given to them as a uh, means of purifying unclean water. And when they went back to France, they brought this taste for absinthe back with them. By the late 19th century, it became the in drink, especially amongst artists and intellectuals. Vincent van Gogh used it frequently. Pablo Picasso painted absinthe-themed works, as did Edgar Degas. Toulouse-Lautrec used it and even taught his pet cormorant to drink it. Its downward slide began with a push from the wine industry, which tried to make it look like the devil in a bottle. Many people aren't aware that back in the late 1800s, the French wine industry was almost completely wiped out by an infestation of an insect. And it's during this time when absinthe experienced a tremendous rise in popularity. When the French wine industry began to make a comeback and get back on their feet, what happened? They found themselves suddenly uh, opposed to this green liquor, which was proclaimed to be the national drink of France. And they found ways to demonize absinthe. Opponents of the drink claimed it rotted your brain, and worse. Yeah, just like, uh, just like reefer madness. Uh, for a period, it was decided that absinthe had some ingredients that were deleterious to your health, uh, that it uh, was, in fact, poisonous. Modern research has shown that the probable cause of absinthe's horrible reputation was due to the fact that many people were drinking inferior brands of the liquor which contained harmful substances, such as copper sulfate. This chemical created a vivid green color in the liquor, but was also poisonous. High quality absinthe didn't seem to have the same dangers. Nevertheless, the damage was done. Absinthe was um, banned in Switzerland um, in 1910, and the US in 1912 and eventually and reluctantly uh, in France just prior to the onset of the First World War. Today, it's regaining legal legitimacy and popularity in such countries as Germany, Spain, and France. Pernod and the Combier distilleries are getting back in the business, along with many new players. Perhaps the most significant ban in absinthe, which was in most of Western Europe, um, is gone since uh, the European Union um, has standardized all its food and beverage laws and it re-legalized absinthe. But the irony here is that traditional absinthe, we know, actually meets modern quality standards. But not in the United States. The current uh, status of absinthe in the United States, absinthe remains in sort of a limbo because the regulations that would define the content of absinthe are somewhat ambiguous and vague. And effectively, uh, the U.S. government has taken a stance that absinthe is more or less um, a beverage that would not be approved by the FDA for distribution for sale in the United States. That may change at some point, but that's the status quo as of uh, this today. In the town of Saumur, located in France's Loire Valley, Bro is distilling an upscale version of the drink at the Combier Distillery. 
I was uh, very curious to determine through modern chemistry, forensic chemistry, essentially, and find out exactly what was in this liquor and was there anything in it that I could find using modern chemistry that would prove uh, that the allegations of its deleterious effects were true, and I was unable to find anything. Bro's initial research concerning the drink was made doubly hard because high-quality absinthe has been scarce since the drink was banned nearly a century ago. Accurate recipes for the liquor are hard to come by. My initial attempts at crafting absinthe on a small scale um, were based upon century-old recipes that were a paragraph or two of information. And while initially I, I had no way to determine how successful they were until I was able to get in my hands um, several bottles of the finest absence from a century ago that were unopened. And when I analyzed and tasted those, I realized that, wow, I was way off base. It took me quite, a, quite some time to be able to reverse engineer those original absence and rediscover the lost art of absinthe crafting. Once Bro perfected the formula, he became obsessed with every aspect of the process. Everything that I do in crafting my absinthe is exactly the way that it was done in the 19th century. Even the Combier distillery is connected to the 19th century. Part of it was designed by the legendary French engineer, Gustave Eiffel. We are very um, linked with the history, and we want to keep like it was before. We know Eiffel for the uh, Eiffel Tower, of course, but he made many, many other things. He designed the main part of the distillery. It's very important for us today because when you go in the distillery, you see this beautiful uh, Eiffel architecture. The ingredients for his absinthe are grown to Bro's exact specifications. They are herbs that don't contribute to the alcoholic content, but flavor the drink. And some say add that green fairy to the mix. Here we have the holy trinity of herbs that are used in making absinthe. First we have Artemisia absinthium, which is commonly known as grand wormwood. This is the single most important herb in making absinthe. This herb is grown for me out near the Swiss border. Next herb we have is green anise from Spain. This herb uh, nowadays is used mostly by the pharmaceutical industry, but this herb gives absinthe its character characteristic anise flavor and aroma. And finally, we have fennel. This is a sweet fennel from Provence. The first part of the distillation process involves maceration of the ingredients. This is the beginning of the maceration process. Here we add herbs, like this wormwood here, to distill. After we add our herbs to distill, we add alcohol. Alcohol extracts the essences from the herbs. And this is allowed to take place over a certain period of time, depending upon the type of absinthe that we make. Once the essences from the herbs are extracted, the still is heated and the alcohol is condensed. Before we distill the absinthe, if one were to taste the maceration of herbs and alcohol that's present before we distill, it's absolutely undrinkable. It's horribly bitter. It's a, it's a nasty mess. However, once the distillation starts and the distillate comes over, um, the result from the, uh, from the distillation process is this, this sweet, beautiful herbal perfume. It's like bottled Alpine springtime. The distillate is condensed and collected. Next, it will be colored. One method of coloring absinthe involves taking a special blend of proprietary coloring herbs, putting them into a giant tea bag, and soaking them into the distilled absinthe. After coloring, the drink is blended, bottled, and ready for consumption. And now I'm going to demonstrate the proper way to prepare an absinthe drink as done in the traditional manner. The first thing we do is take our absinthe glass. In this case, we have a two-piece glass called a brewery glass. Into this glass, we pour about an ounce and a half of our absinthe, and we take the top portion of the glass and fill it with ice into the top portion of the glass we add cool water, which drips through the ice slowly, gently, creating the clouding effect that is associated with the quality absinthe. 
And what's happening is the cool water is driving out the essences that are dissolved in the pure liquor. And once enough water is added, just so that the entire drink becomes cloudy, then our absinthe is finished and is ready to drink. Santé. On the sweeter end of the distillery business are the liqueurs. More prim, proper, and legal than absinthe, they're created to start or end a fine meal. In 1878, 8 million liters of absinthe were imported into the United States. This